strange way to start a football press conference, but just wondered if you could have your reaction and reflections on what's probably been an extraordinary week in all of our lives. Yeah, it was clearly a very, very sad day and, and I think it, it's fitting how the, the country's obviously uh, commemorating the Queen's death. So, uh, so yeah, she obviously done a remarkable job, gave up her adult life virtually to uh, to to her role, and um, and like I say, uh, always carried it out with distinction. So, um, so yeah, I had the, the good fortune of of meeting the the Queen twice, and uh, it was. Uh, yeah, very inspiring, and once on my own, and once with my daughter. So, uh, so yeah, it was. Uh, so I'll always cherish that, that memory. Some of those stories of people meeting her have been quite spine tingling. What did you go away thinking about her on those days then? Yeah, well, it was very much that. I uh, myself and my daughter Misha, we went to. Um, she's uh, a diabetic, Misha, and we were invited to St James's Palace for for an evening with the with the Queen and, and some guests as she was the, the patron of the uh, diabetes um UK. So uh so probably like most people that, that meet, there's um certain things you've got to adhere to, but uh but as you stood waiting and waiting for her to come through into the room, there's a real anticipation and a real feeling that you're meeting uh someone uh special and, and and that's exactly what it was she came through the room and uh and came along the line and and, and met us all so um so yeah you just think of obviously the role that she's had to play over many many years and and the enthusiasm and the dedication to that role so um so yeah something that both myself and and misha would always remember the game was called off did it give you a chance for a little bit of reflection over the last few weeks, just that kind of moment of, I don't know, perspective, looking at what you've done, just actually having a little bit of time to yeah. sum up what's happened so far. <clears throat> yeah, I think that uh, obviously we were really looking forward to playing, first and foremost. We had a, you know, trained all week and you're ready for the game, but of course it's, uh, it doesn't, uh, it doesn't take place so like you say you go away and um, and you move on uh, to your next game and, and look to prepare best as you possibly can for that so uh, so yeah um, obviously a sad situation meant the the game wasn't on and then we we look forward and the, the players we've had a really good week this week just finally for me a little bit of a gear change I know but um, Todd Bowley sort of talked about this north-south game this week and it's kind of captured a few people's imagination for good or for bad. Um, I wondered, first of all, Leicester in the north. I'm not sure too many around here would be too happy with that. What are your thoughts? Fancy uh, being a part of that? Thoughts are we might get a free weekend that weekend. <laughs> if it's just the north and the south, the Midlands clubs will get a breather. <laughs> so that would be, uh, be nice. Yeah, I... Um, yeah, obviously Todd's come into to the game and um, and we'll probably find when he looks back on the notion of that that uh, maybe wasn't one of his better ideas. He's been a very successful man in his his life and his career, but um, now I think what we're in a we're in a world now in football where we're trying to minimise the number of games. Uh, so I really don't see what that would would bring if uh, you're looking to add another one into the mix as well. So um so no, it's it's not something that probably most football people and, and people in general would say we we would need. Brendan, hi. Um, hi. So it's often said you learn more about yourself in adversity. What are you learning about yourself and your team and those around you at the moment? Well yeah it's of course it's it's difficult in terms of results. But what we've tried to do is is just um, you know keep the keep the keep the environment light and and making sure that the players you know they, we understand we, we you know we're in a situation that we haven't been in here before where we you know the results haven't gone our way and the performances aren't uh, to the level that we would want. But I think what what's important is that we continue to we have to be brave. We have to continue to show that bravery. 
sometimes you um, you're not quite in your game you can maybe lose that aggression but you can't afford to do that you got to still press the game you still got to be aggressive and uh, and and importantly you have to defend very very well collectively so we've been able to look at all those aspects of our game like i've said before bringing a clarity and making sure the that the focus is there for the the players and and for me it's it's straightforward you know you just come into work and uh, enjoy working with the players and, and like i said just trying to ensure that we can do the basics well and this club has had a, a remarkable few years almost unlike any other perhaps at any other club in the way that it's risen so how is the club and those within it how are they dealing with this sudden dip this this setback if you like well i think we everyone's very supportive and everyone's still working very very hard i think there's there's no other way you uh I think at times it gets here. Everyone has, you know, you, you want to see that grit and that passion within your, within your workplace, uh, and that's something that we have here in abundance. Because, like in anything and in, in any any sport, it's not just about the talent. You know, the it's the, the ones that succeed are, are those ones that have that grit and that determination and that perseverance. So, uh, so that's what we're seeing. We're seeing that from the players, and and we will keep pushing and. We, uh, you know, we'll get the result that hopefully will uh, push us on and hopefully that'll come sooner rather than later. And that's the key thing, isn't it? Um, you're playing the Spurs side who've won six in a row in the Premier League, mm. uh, third in the table. Those things are obvious, you can see them. Uh, they're also stung by a defeat in midweek, mm. which they've not actually experienced this season. So it's hard to see or recall a worse time to play them in a way. Uh, what sort of challenge is that for you? Well, it's it's clearly a big challenge. They've, um, like you say, they've they've done very very well last season into the Champions League and uh, got some very very talented players. And uh, Antonio, uh, he, he works how he works, and uh, he's got them very organised, and and they have that quality there. So we know it's going to be a we know it's going to be a really difficult game at whatever stage you went there, whether you're in the, your best form or, or not. But um, but like I said earlier, you have to have that bravery. You can't uh, you can't sit back and and just let it happen. So for us, you know, our intention is to is to go and look to play our game, go and play with that that courage that we've shown many times and and that aggression in our game. And um, like I say, if we, we can cut cut out our mistakes, then uh, it, it gives us a much better chance to get a result. I guess you'd urge patience, and when you look at the fixture list, I know you'll tell us every game is incredibly difficult at mm. this level, but you look at the fixtures to come, the likes of Forest, Bournemouth, Wolves, Palace, Leeds, uh, the next month could see a very different picture, couldn't it? Yeah, well, we think through to the uh, through to when it, uh, the games finish in November, there's a, there's a great opportunity uh, to push on. There's no doubt we had a tough fixture list, but uh, but in saying that we, we should have more points. But but you have to you have to deliver, and that's that's what we aim to do. So, um, but listen, I I totally get it. We 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 haven't made a, a good start at all, but um, but I'm very confident in the players, and and from what I'm seeing, that uh, they're very determined to to get the result. Thanks very much. Pleasure. Hi, Brendan. Okay, you're okay. Um, I wonder whether I could ask about injuries. Is there are there any fresh concerns for you ahead of the weekend? Uh, Dennis Pratt has been out for uh, for a few days, so uh, but he should uh, come back into training tomorrow uh, and should be okay. Apart from that, everyone um, everyone is, is okay. What was the issue with with Dennis? Uh, just his foot. He's had an ongoing issue with his foot for a little while. He's trained through it. He's tried to play through it. Um, so he's just been offloaded for a few days to try and allow that to recover, and uh, and, and I seen him out on the pitches today with the we our conditioning team and rehabilitation team, and he, he looked fine. So should be okay for tomorrow. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, the uh, twenty five man squad for for Leicester has been announced now, and the, and the rest of the clubs as well. Uh, Ryan Bertrand is in the squad. Ricardo isn't, and obviously due due to his injury, are you anticipating that you'll be able to? Have Ryan Bertrand available to you before January? Well, that's what 
uh, the, the reason why uh, Ryan's been made available and, and Ricardo hasn't. We're not expecting Ricardo back until sometime in the new year. So, um, and every other player that uh, we reckon can get and be fit in this period, they're they're in the squad. Um, the stadium expansion uh, was approved yesterday at a planning mm. meeting. Um, I wonder if it, for you as the manager of the football club, how big you feel that that kind of project is right now and I suppose how big it is that it's actually been approved and it can go ahead. Well, I think it's uh, a great news for the for the football club and, uh, and I also think it's a great, you know, uh, showing where that sort of collaboration between the the, the local authorities and, and the and the club uh, and how much they work together to to keep improving and developing Leicester City. So uh, so yeah, so I think it's great news. It's obviously uh, part of the legacy of of Kunvici. It's something that uh, his plans were were thought about and, and talked about uh, when he was alive. So this is another example of continuing to. Uh, to commemorate his legacy and keep the club the club developing and, and moving forward. Having a training ground like this mm. and, and having that stadium expansion approved and of, of, of course all the regeneration around the area with the hotel mm. and the arena and things like that, how, how will that benefit Leicester City on, on the pitch? Will, it, will that kind of thing, do you think, appeal to maybe potential players that the club would like to bring in? Is that something that would go through a player's mind, do you think? Yeah, well, I think firstly the, the the training facility. This is a world class training ground, so that's that's something that will always appeal to a player. The ability to come in and you know work and and prepare and and get yourself ready for your profession in this environment is is what any player would love. Firstly, and of course, secondly, at the stadium with the the club growing and developing, it, it's fan base getting more supporters in, and obviously some revenue that will come from that as well then clearly that, that benefits the football club.